Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog. This is episode 156, I think, and these are just two quick episodes I'm squeezing in here after work. I had a long day. It's free comic day. I had a long day today, and I missed out on all of free comic day. I went to a couple stores trying to find that limited edition Venom poster, and unfortunately, I missed one at House of Secrets by like 10 minutes. So I was like, oh, of course, my Peter Parker luck. I couldn't get one. And then there is one at Legacy Comics. They're doing a giveaway on their Facebook page, so I'll put a link down to that below if one of you guys out there want to try to win it as well. All you have to do is like them on Facebook and keep an eye out over the next few days. I think they're going to post something about how we could try to win that poster. So if you guys want to try to enter that, you can. They're a really cool comic store, so give them a check. You know, check them out. Uh, but what I wanted to do in this episode, in the last episode, we talked about Venom not being part of the MCU, and you know that might disappoint some of you guys. But then there's also still people out there that think that Venom, you know, needs Spider-Man to tell a story. And we've talked about that numerous times here on this channel that you don't actually need Spider-Man to tell a Venom story. Now, if you want to tell Venom as a villain to Spider-Man and being the anti-Spider-Man. If you want to tell that story, of course you need uh, Spider-Man uh, for that story. But if you're going in a new direction and you just want to tell a story with the basics of the character, we're going to look at today in this episode what those basics are. And I actually want to go to an article here. I think I can find it real quick on my Kindle. Hopefully it pulls it up uh, pretty quickly. But there was an article that someone put up that said, uh, here's why you don't need uh, Spider-Man. Here it is. It says, no, the Venom movie doesn't need Spider-Man, and here's why. And this is an article uh, posted by Games Radar. So I'm going to put a link to this down below because although I appreciate this person's sentiment uh, and their, their overall, you know, theory that you don't need uh, Spider-Man to tell Venom story, which I also agree with that theory. Uh, but the reasons they listed, I didn't feel like were solid reasons. Uh, they didn't list anything from a motivational standpoint or a character standpoint. They listed a lot of things from a fanboy standpoint. And so I was like, oh, this could have been a much stronger article and you could have probably driven this point home better if you would have just focused on the character and not all this fanboy stuff. And he was listing like, oh, well, in the comic books, you know, the suit came from a battle world with all the Avengers on it and the X-Men, you know, during uh, Secret Wars. And then it went on Spider-Man and then he brought it home and he wore it for a while. And then it went to Eddie Brock. And then he says, you know, so you need, if you're going to complain that there's no Spider-Man, you should also complain that there's no Secret Wars and all that. And it's like, no, that's not what we have to complain about because also in the animated series, they just had John Jameson, who's J. Jonah Jameson's son, who was an astronaut. They had him bring the suit back from like the moon or an asteroid in outer space that he was landing on and stuff. So they could already do that without Secret Wars. And we've all seen that and have loved that on the animated show. So again, it kind of pokes a hole in that right there. And then he also says like, well, Venom is supposed to be the anti-Spider-Man. He's Spider-Man without the responsibility, which is kind of true. He's kind of the bad guy and, you know, antagonist to Spider-Man. But he says, if you want to see a Venom movie where Spider-Man's involved, just watch Spider-Man 3 and that's the best it's ever going to get. And I also disagree with that because the thing with that movie is that it had three villains. It had to wrap up the Harry Osborn story, it set up and wrapped up the Sandman story, and it introduced Venom at the same time. To me, if it was just Spider-Man in the black costume and Venom, that movie could have worked a lot better. And then you could have maybe thrown in the Sin Eater and Gene DeWolf or something, and you could have told a really focused story with like pretty much one villain. Sin Eater there for a little bit just to kind of set up the Venom stuff, but then, you know, have Venom be the payoff. But I think you could have told that story with the first half of Spider-Man in the black costume and the last hour Venom, you know, in the movie and terrorizing Peter Parker's life. So to me, I also poke a hole through that. The reason it didn't work in Spider-Man 3 was because of the other villains, in my opinion. Uh, but, you know, from a from a motivational standpoint, let's focus on that. This is what the article didn't go over and what I was kind of like, oh, if you would have done this, because more people read Games Radar probably than watch my show. So it's like, I want this information to get out there. Uh, but if you look at Eddie Brock, we said it a thousand times on this show, what you need, all you need for him to be motivated to be Venom and all you need for the suit to feel motivated is that you need them both to want revenge on the same thing. So if Peter Parker, if you look at Eddie Brock's life in the comics, he was a journalist. He was after a story with the Sin Eater. That all went to hell. He got ousted as a fraud when Spider-Man captured, a, you know, apparently the real Sin Eater. It made Eddie Brock's story and his expose on the Sin Eater look like a fraud. It caused him to get fired and it caused that uh, newspaper, the Daily Globe, to go under and it ruined his life, his reputation. He couldn't get any work after that. His wife left him. It caused his anger issues to come out of him. So he pushed her away. Uh, his, his inability to be accepted by his father his whole life. That started to come back to him and his father stopped speaking to him again. So it pushed all the people that he had, the few little people he had in his life, 
pushed them all away from him and it ruined him. And so because of that, because he couldn't get a job anywhere and no one would trust him and he was just deemed a liar. And that to me is very relatable to nowadays where people out there maybe make a mistake. It depends on the mistake. Obviously there are people out there doing horrendous stuff, but there are people in the world that make maybe small mistakes uh, or semi small mistakes um, or even sometimes big mistakes, but try to, you know, uh, you know, get redemption for them or try to, you know, show how sorry they are for those mistakes and they get slammed and ousted and they get, you know, fired from their jobs and they, you know, just because they made, you know, maybe a monumental mistake, but hopefully one they can bounce back and be forgiven from. And I think that's the most relatable thing about Venom and something that speaks to this generation right now is how we see people online get torn to shreds. Imagine that being Eddie Brock. Imagine all of us going on using a hashtag, you know, fire Eddie Brock. Maybe he posted an article that, you know, was wrong on for CNN or something something and we were all were trying to get him fired because you know we're all banding together to ruin this guy's life because he did something wrong and uh, and then now that's the story that you're telling you're telling the story about that guy after his life is ruined and so to me that's his motivation he wants revenge on the person who ruined his life and in the comics it was spider-man but in the movie it could be the life foundation the life foundation has enough power and influence uh, considering they make you know things for medical stuff and and probably military applications kind of like the umbrella corporation in resident evil and and in that video game, they also tried to to a smear campaign on the stars members that were trying to out them for being, you know, running genetic experiments. So they were trying to discredit Chris Redfield and Jill and all those people. So you can see that happening to Eddie Brock and his life being ruined. And if the symbiote is an experiment from the Life Foundation and they're torturing it and it finds its way to Eddie Brock, that gives it the same motivation. It wants to get revenge on the Life Foundation and Riz Ahmed's character, Dr. Carlton Drake. And now Eddie Brock does too because his life was ruined. So to me, those are the main things you need from a character standpoint to tell an origin story of Venom and it looks like that's what they're focusing on for this movie is it is about a journalist who maybe goes too far trying to get to the truth it falls apart blows up in his face his life gets ruined and when he's at the bottom of the bottom of the bottomest barrel he finds the symbiote and together they rise up as anti-heroes to get justice but a very brutal form of justice and a very personal form of justice not even you know doing it for the greater good but doing it for themselves as well so to me that's all you really need for venom to have a solo story and it looks like this movie is going to give it to us but what do you think do you think there's more to it than that because i know people think venom is just the spider on his chest they think he's you know like he looks a certain way he can't look like the ultimate comics he has to swing around like spider-man they think all that stuff is essential to the character and while it is to the look of the character um especially in the comic books it is not if you're trying to translate like if i was getting the job hey if you want a job if you want to keep a roof over your family's head you got to write a venom movie but it can't have spider-man i would start with what these guys did i would go what makes the character tick okay his life needs to be ruined the symbiote needs to be uh ha have to want the same revenge that eddie does and then they need to merge and go after the people that you know they want to get revenge on together and to me, that's what this movie does. So I think this is probably the only way you can do a Venom movie without Spider-Man. And it seems like they're doing it pretty good so far. But obviously, we haven't seen the final product. We don't know. But uh, yeah, what do you guys think? I don't think Venom needs the... I would love to see the spider on his chest and all that. But we did kind of get that with Topher Grace. And even though it wasn't a good example of what we could have gotten, we could have got something better. It is... We, we've seen that kind of. So now it's time for something new. It's more of a monster movie. Ruben Fleischer said, you know, it's kind of like The Fly. It's like he wants to do something more Cronenberg-esque and a little bit more John Carpenter-esque uh, Carpenter and he wants to you know to have something more of a monster movie and so that's what they did and so that's why Venom and the Ice Sculpture looks like a giant form of the ultimate suit with the purple lights on him uh, although he's going to be all black obviously and he'll probably have the white veins going through him just to split up the black like we talked about in our breakdown video so you guys let me know I know some of you will disagree with me on this but I'm just trying to look at it from a character standpoint and not so much just the look of Venom but what motivates him to you know to do what he wants to do and this is what i feel all you need to make that story possible so let me know as always what you think in the comments down below thanks for watching my show like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you guys in the future ultimate week is coming up soon so stay tuned peace